Welcome to this week's pod. This week I'm going to talk about photography and especially art photography. Through the years I've been photographing a lot of different things. But I think that what interests me most are people. Because when you capture someone's expression, at least it feels a little bit like you, you capture a little bit of their persona and who they are. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe it's just a moment in time. But that's how it makes you feel. And that moment in time also becomes a memory later. That's also the way it makes me reflect when I look at old pictures of my ancestors, for example. That someone saved through generations. And that snap when, when someone triggered the camera, that moment is saved in time. Like... Well, maybe not forever, but at least as long as, as you have the picture. And that's pretty cool when you think about it. It gives pictures a, a greater meaning and it makes them invaluable. For me, it's like that. Every picture that I have photographed is, is a memory, is something I can go back to and look at. And it's like Marcel Proust and, and the Madeleine cookie. Then when you break it, and same thing with when you look at the image. It's like you go back in time and you can be at that place in that moment again. That goes for all pictures, of course. But there's something special about portraits. Because, you know, we age. We change. We don't look the same. We, I don't mean it in a negative way, but it's also just, it's just part of life. Everything changes. But that very moment in time does not change. So there is something magical about images in that sense. I will talk a little bit more about portraits after the music. I will talk about the techniques I use, the light I use, and what I think makes a picture look good. As a photographer, I always choose natural light to work with, if it's possible. And the reason is simply that I think natural light is more beautiful than lamps. It's, it's that simple. And one can argue that because if you have lamps that are really, really good, and if you can, if you can light the scene in a deliberate way, you can also get results that sometimes are better than you would have with natural light because you, you get control if you have artificial light of any kind. Well, natural light is nice to work in also because it changes, which can be difficult to overcome sometimes, but it also means that you have to change, you have to adapt, which is a good thing for a photographer to be able to read the image, and read the surrounding and kind of a little bit foresee what happens and see opportunities in the image. You know, for example, if the sun starts to shine a little bit brighter, it can be a bad thing, but it, it can also be an opportunity depending on what you are photographing. And I think that's kind of the charm with it. It's a little bit tricky, but it can also be very rewarding. But I think the key is to follow the light, basically. 
and, and study it. Because suddenly there's an opportunity that wasn't there before. Because the light changes. I kind of like that challenge myself. When it comes to cameras and the technical part, I personally think they are not so important at all. Because light is always more important than the gear. If you can uh, light the scene properly, the gear does not matter so much. There's a few things to think about if you are if you shoot digital and you want to post process a lot, it's good to shoot raw. If you shoot film, it's good to choose a good film. Um, like Portra or Kodak Ektar or good black and white films that give you the result you are looking for. Mostly it's just about practice, basically. Check that the technique is actually working, that the camera is working, and you get the files that you want to get and that you get the right file format and things like that. And you get the focus, because that, that can be a bummer sometimes that the autofocus doesn't work properly. But once you figure out all these things, the rest is quite simple. It's more about imagination and have a purpose with what you do, which is much more important than the, than the gear. But what I think is most important of all the things you do when you take a photograph is the relationship with the person you are photographing. Photos are about communication. So the way you treat people, the way you communicate with people, the way you talk to them, the way you are as a person, that's what matters most. A good photographer is friendly and a good listener. They understand the person they are photographing and what their needs are. Because how you are, that's how you make them feel. And how you make them feel, that's what they're going to look like when you photograph them. What you give is what you get. If you have a person who's really nervous, it's really easy to overact on that. For example, if then the photographer has a tendency to be controlling, the nervous person might end up like they don't know how to do anything or what to do at all because they just freeze, basically. Because being controlling, that makes people freeze. Often it's much better, you know, just to let people be. Let them be themselves. Let them be who they are. Let them find their own clues and give them some time. Most of us perform much better if we are given time to do things over and over again. Quality of performance is practice. There are no secrets, basically. If a person feels safe with you, and they feel they can be themselves, well, your photographs will be much better. So one has to be able to tune in to that person. And that's what I also think is so interesting with portrait photography. Not just that it's moments in time captured forever, which is super great for the person who gets the pictures and to be part of as a photographer, but also because it's interesting to be part of a process where you get to know another person and try to figure out what they want and how they feel and what they want to express in the images. So in short, if you're a portrait photographer, it's good to be interested in people. And it's quite helpful to be interested in psychology. I mean, it really helps to understand other people a little bit and then kind of tune in on the right wavelength with them so you speak the same language and can work together.
if I summarize all these things, I would say that it's the relationship with the person you are photographing. The other one is light, because you need good light for portraits. And you need light that is good for skin. And you need light that is good for the mood. And the third one is, is, is the technique. You have to get the camera to work and just see that nothing's really wrong with the camera, you know, so like some some kind of strange setup or something. You, you can go pretty far. I, I do not use auto on the camera, but you can go pretty far with auto, I would say. <laughs> if you just got good IDs and you have a good eye and you're very good with people, that will take you much further when it comes to portrait photography than the camera itself. Nowadays, people take a lot of good pictures with their phones. But smartphones are so good nowadays, so you, you can actually use them as a camera. And, and why not? Just take the camera you have uh, or the phone you have and, and do the best with what you have. So a few bars from another piano piece I recorded. That was a short piece of um, a composition I call Recovering. You can find it on my album Queen of the Stars that I released this year, 2020. The greatest year of all time. I'm ironic. So a few last words on portrait photography. What I think is the, the coolest thing about taking pictures of people is that because it's a moment in time and because you get to keep the picture from that moment, it becomes invaluable. I mean, it's only that picture from that very moment where you have that expression, it's unique. So this was this week's pod. And if you want to see some of my portrait photography, you can go to my online exhibition and you can see some of my own favorites. I also post my uh, pictures on Instagram, so you can also follow me there. And um, please contact me if you would like to, or if you just want to leave a comment uh, about the pod and photography. Uh, I mean, it could be portrait photography or, or photography in general. So see you guys next week. My friend, she's a bird. And she's not from this world Far away Like the moon My friend, she's a bird And she's not from this world She's far away Like the moon She's not from this world She's far away Hi.